Hi viewers. Today we will discuss about a very common topic of pathology which is cellular adaptations. So, let's get started. For the sake of survival on exposure to stress, the cells make adjustments with changes in their environment which may be of two types. Physiological and pathological. Such adaptations occur by following process. By decreasing or increasing their size, as happened during atrophy and hypertrophy respectively. Or, by increasing their numbers occur in hyperplasia. And by, changing the pathway of phenotypic differentiation as occur in metaplasia and dysplasia. In general, adaptive responses are reversible on withdrawal of stimulus. However, if the stimulus persists for longer time, the cell may not be able to survive, and may either die or progress further. Thus, the concept of evaluation, survival of the fittest, hold true for adaptation as survival of adaptable. Adaptations are reversible changes in size, phenotype, metabolic activity, or function of cell in response to changes in their environment. The types of cellular adaptations includes hypertrophy, atrophy, hyperplasia, and metaplasia. And now, we will discuss in detail one by one. Hyperplasia is an increase in number of cells in an organ or tissue, usually resulting in an increased mass of organ or tissue. Although, hypertrophy and hyperplasia are distinct processes, but, they frequently occur together, and they may be triggered by the same external stimulus. Hyperplasia takes place, if the cell is capable of dividing. Neoplasia, is differ from hyperplasia, in having hyperplastic growth with loss of growth regulatory mechanism due to change in genetic composition. If we talk about pathological feature of hyperplasia, then, there is an enlargement of affected organ or tissue, and, increase in number of cells. This is due to, increased number of DNA synthesis, and, hence, increased mitosis of cell. Hyperplasia can be, physiological or pathological. Physiological hyperplasia, can be further divided into two main types. First one is, hormonal hyperplasia, occur, under the influence of hormonal stimulation. For example, hyperplasia of female breast at puberty, during pregnancy and lactation. And, hyperplasia of pregnant women. Second one is, compensatory hyperplasia, occur, following the removal of part of an organ, or a contralateral organ in ped organ. For example, regeneration of liver, following partial hepatic tomy and regeneration of epidermis after skin abrasion. Pathological hyperplasia is due to excessive stimulation of hormones or growth factors acting on target cells. Examples include endometrial hyperplasia following estrogen excess and benign prostate hyperplasia. Metaplasia is defined as a reversible change of one type of epithelial or mesenchymal adult cells to another type of adult epithelial or mesenchymal cells, usually in response to abnormal stimuli, and often revert back to normal on removal of stimulus. However, if stimulus persists for a long time, epithelial metaplasia may transform into cancer. Metaplasia is broadly divided into two main types. Epithelial and mesenchymal metaplasia. Epithelial metaplasia is the more common type in which metaplastic changes may be patchy or diffused and usually result in replacement by stronger but less well specialized epithelium. Depending on the types of epithelium transformed, two types of epithelial metaplasia are seen, which are squamous and columnar metaplasia. Squamous metaplasia is more common. Various types of specialized epithelium are capable of undergoing squamous metaplastic changes due to chronic irritation that may be mechanical, chemical or infective in origin. Some common examples of squamous metaplasia are seen at following sites. In habitual smokers, the normal ciliated columnar epithelial cell of trachea and bronchi are often replaced by stratified squamous epithelial cells and in prostate gland, in chronic prostatitis and estrogen therapy. Columnar metaplasia. There are some conditions, in which, there is transformation of squamous epithelium to columnar epithelium. For example, in intestinal metaplasia in healed chronic gastric ulcer. 
Connective tissue metaplasia is the formation of cartilage, bone, or adipose tissue in tissues that normally do not contain these elements. For example, the bone formation in muscles occasionally occur after intramuscular hemorrhage. This type of metaplasia is less clearly seen as an adaptive response. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of parenchymal cells, resulting in enlargement of organ or tissues without any changes in number of cells. Increased workload leads to increased protein synthesis, increased size and number of intracellular organelles, which in turn leads to increase in cell size. The increased cell size leads to increased size of organ. If we talk about the mechanism of hypertrophy, hypertrophy is the result of increased production of cellular proteins. Hypertrophy can be induced by linked action of mechanical sensors that are triggered by increased workload. Growth factors such as tissue growth factor beta and fibroblast growth factors and vasoactive agents such as alpha-adrenergic agonists. Hypertrophy may be physiological or pathological. In both cases, it is caused by increased functional demand or by hormonal the striated muscle cells in heart and skeletal muscles have only a limited capacity of division and respond to increased metabolic demand, mainly by undergoing hypertrophy. The most common stimulus for hypertrophy of muscle is increased workload. Enlarged size of uterus in pregnancy is an excellent example of physiological hypertrophy. Hypertrophy of cardiac muscles that may occur in number of cardiovascular diseases is a best example of pathological hypertrophy. A trophy is a reduced size of tissue or organ resulting from decrease in cell size and number of specific organ or tissue which was once normal. A trophy result from decreased protein synthesis and increased protein degradation in cells. Protein synthesis decrease because of reduced metabolic activity. The degradation of cellular protein occurs mainly by ubiquitin proteosome pathway. Nutrient deficiency and disuse may activate protein ubiquitin liagus, which attach the small peptide ubiquitin to cellular proteins and target these proteins for degradation in proteosomes. Proteusums basically destroy or degrade unneeded or damaged proteins by a process called proteolysis. Atrophy can be physiological or pathological. Pathological atrophy is common during normal development, which could be due to loss of endocrine stimulation or atherosclerosis. For examples, atrophy of gonads after menopause and atrophy of brain with aging. Pathological atrophy depends on underlying causes and can be local or generalized, which includes starvation atrophy, ischemic atrophy, disuse atrophy, endocrine atrophy and idiopathic atrophy. So, that's all about cellular adaptations. Hope you like this video. Suggest the topic in comment section below on which you want me to make my next video. And also subscribe to my channel, PharmacyD, for more cool content about pathology and medicine. Thank you.